Happy anniversary to each one of us uh, uh, of the International Central Gospel Church. 39 years and God has done so much uh, for us and there's so much to be thankful for, so much to be grateful for, but so much also to do uh, for the Lord. When we started our journey 39 years ago, 26th of February 1984, and today uh, we celebrate 26th of February 2023. Of course, when we started uh, 39 years ago, uh, 39 years uh, seemed very far away for us. I don't think we're looking this far uh, to see how life would be uh, in 2023. Um, uh, of course, uh, most of us were very young and none of the pastors was 39 years at that time. Uh, God has brought us a very long way. We've learned a lot along the journey uh, and there is so much to be done for him, for his kingdom and for his people. And as you know, uh, next year would be the big one, uh, our 40th anniversary, and we would want to commemorate it in a very significant way as we think of ways in which we can establish uh, God's work in our lives. This year, our, our theme has been and is gathering. And we are talking about gathering up fragments so that nothing may be lost. And as we look at that scripture, and I know that we've looked at it many ways so far this year, uh, we, we think about what Jesus had in mind when he told his disciples to gather up the fragments of a miracle that he has worked. Uh, 5,000 people have been fed. There is an overflow. That would seem to be like uh, the time to be thankful, to be grateful, but just to walk and celebrate the victory and go and tell the testimony of how Christ has met our need. But in the midst of that momentous miracle, something that should overwhelm everybody, he focuses on a detail that we can easily forget. That in the midst of the abundance, there is responsibility and that we gather up the fragments, put them into baskets so that nothing that he has done will be lost. Now I think it speaks to us also as a church. Of course we can say that as a church we've enjoyed the miracle of God's increase and in abundance and there is so much bread that has come our way. God's word has come our way. We've been able to do so much beyond our own dreams. But in the midst of all of that we pause to think what are the fragments that we must pay attention to and where must we put the fragments so that nothing is lost? You know, Christianity uh, did not come to us uh, just by chance. It came because God purposed that Christ should come into our lives, that through him eternal life will be preached to all men. And from the foundation of the church 2,000 years ago, uh, the message of Christ has been preached but it's not always been an easy message. It's not always been an easy mission. The early Christians suffered so much for what we today take for granted and believe in. Uh, some of them died, some of them were beheaded and they were brutally treated. But they held on and they made sure that the fragments would not be left in the ground. They gathered up the fragments and they preserved the message of Christ in baskets so that generations after them will hear the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you imagine if the early apostles have just enjoyed being with Jesus Christ, they just are happy that they knew Jesus Christ, happy at the resurrection, and just forgot about everything else. And then when they were persecuted, had just moved on to safety in their lives, but they gathered up the fragments. And through them, from Jerusalem to Samaria, through to Asia Minor, the gospel of Christ was preached. And then it went to Europe. And from Europe, it got to us in Ghana. But it is one continuous line of people gathering up fragments and ensuring that the baskets will hold the message of the gospel and get to us. So today, as we look at Christianity all over the world, the picture is both hopeful and depressing. Europe, 
which received the message of the gospel and brought it to us have abandoned the message of the gospel. Asia Minor has abandoned the message of the gospel. Jerusalem, Samaria has abandoned the message of the gospel and it has gotten to us. So the danger is, will we also abandon the gospel? Will we also receive it and not take care of the fragments that nothing is lost? The church in Africa is the fastest growing facet of the Christian church. Uh, churches are springing up everywhere. Uh, people are gathering in large numbers and, and, and doing phenomenal things for God. And we are part of that gathering. There is so much to be thankful to God for. But the church in Africa has grown very wide, but not deep. Because people have approached Christianity simply as a means to survive the horrors of the African reality, of failed governments, of disappointment, and, and the church has been our hope. So people go to church praying for their daily bread, praying for breakthroughs, praying for God to give them this and give them that, and God give them husbands and wives and children and all of that. That has been our preoccupation. The question is, in the midst of all that God is doing and meeting our needs, there are fragments that are falling down. And if we are not careful, we'll be so preoccupied with what we call our breakthrough that we miss the fragments and the baskets we must put them in. And so the church in Africa is growing wide and, and large, but not growing deep. Its faith is not deep. Its theology is not deep. The commitment of the people is not deep. Beyond their own need, there is no further commitment. And if we progress at this rate, then we can also lose the fragments and everything will be lost. And that is why I am personally committed and I trust that you are committed and we must be committed as a church, not just to enjoying the abundance and the increase, but also deepening our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, our faith in Christianity, our faith in Christ and God and thinking about how Christianity speaks to us today at a deeper level, not just to meet our need, but to entrench God's purpose for the salvation of the human race. That should be a concern for each one of us. And that should be something that we work towards. We want to see the kingdom of God built and we want to see the glory of God established. And we want to serve God not just because of the bread that he gives to us, but we want to serve him because of who he is and to love him for who he is and to believe in him for who he is. And so my desire for International Central Gospel Church in the years coming, that will be a church that goes deeper and for the pastors, I know that the people are putting pressure on us to give them bread, but they are eating the bread so fast that they are leaving their fragments and they don't care about it. They don't care about Christianity. They don't care about the truth of the Bible. Theology is not important to them. All they want is their breakthrough. And if we are not careful, we meet the needs of the people, but the people are lost. And there are many people in the church who are lost beyond pursuing a miracle there is nothing about Christianity that is deep to them. We're losing a lot of our young people, not just to other churches, but they are losing their faith because they have questions the church is not answering. Some of the questions are very relevant and they are deep and they are important and they are theological. But because the church is not emphasizing on theology, it's not able to answer those questions. And if we go that way, then what has happened uh, to the church from Jerusalem to Samaria, to Asia Minor, to Europe, which has brought to it to us, may also happen to us. And what a dark world it will be when those who are the bearers of light drop the torchlight, drop the fire, drop the light of the gospel so that the gospel is extinguished in our world. What a dark world it will be. And we are already seeing the effects of the darkness of our world. Bizarre ideas have become normal. Ideas that are self-evident to each one of us 
as very, very unsound, being propagated because the light is gone. Africa is the hope of the world in so many ways, not only economically, but spiritually, because this is now the cradle of the Christian faith. And for churches like ours, we must be careful that we pick up the fragments, we contain the message of the gospel in baskets, that nothing is lost. So today, as we celebrate our 39th anniversary, there's so much to thank God for, but this is the burden I want to share with you. It's a burden I want you to share also, that you would not just be a Christian looking for your own bread, but to preserve what is left of the message that Christ Jesus brought to us, what his death signifies, what his resurrection signifies, what the hope he has brought to us signifies. And I want you to share in this message to be a deeper Christian, to love the Lord deeply, to serve him deeply, to do his will, to understand his word, to preach his word faithfully, so that we can say that even though people are dropping the fragments in ICGC, we are putting the fragments into baskets so that nothing may be lost. I wish each one of us a great celebration as we look towards our 40th, but I also want to leave you with a burden to be a true believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless each one of us. Happy anniversary to us, and may the Lord do great things with each one of us.